In 1900, architect Cass Gilbert referred to the skyscraper as a machine that makes the land pay. Chicago skyscrapers have always been designed to maximize tenancy on a single parcel of land. Since more floors meant more office space, architects built upwards to increase profits for real estate investors. Completed in 1895, the Marquette Building proved to be one of the most profitable skyscrapers during Chicago's building boom at the end of the 19th century. The building was so successful that in 1906, an addition was added to its west side. But in the post-World War II years, as with so many other downtown buildings, occupancy dwindled and owners could not afford to maintain the building's original design. In the 1950s, the cornice was removed, the windows behind the elevators were bricked up, and the grillwork elevator doors were replaced with bronze doors. As vacant space became the norm, Marquette, became less an example of prime money-making real estate and more a likely candidate to be raised. Two decades later, with Chicago still in decline, the city began demolishing historic buildings in the name of progress and modernization. Documenting these demolitions was a Chicago photographer named Richard Nickel. Nickel's haunting images of a disappearing Chicago galvanized the historic preservation movement and helped establish the Landmarks Preservation Council of Illinois. In 1973, the council formed the Citizens Committee to save the Marquette and staged a protest in the building's lobby with period reenactors. The protest and other lobbying efforts resulted in the city council designating the building a Chicago landmark in 1975. It was further designated a National Historic Landmark in 1976. The fight to preserve the Marquette Building and its successful designation as a historic landmark is an important part of Chicago's architectural legacy. The win marked a turning point in the city's approach to urban planning and understanding of the continuing value of architecture.